Okay, welcome to Friday. This is a uh, going to be a review over angles and triangles. I think most of it's a review, but um, it's very important to watch because you're going to uh, be re uh, uh, well reviewed and hopefully you'll recognize the vocabulary, but it, that's something that you have to kind of remember. So um, we're going to jog your memory and, and put down some notes so that you have something to refer, refer to as you work. Um, starting though, this is yesterday's assignment. Um, put a little Easter egg in the video yesterday where I made a mistake. The mistake was an accident, but then I left it in thinking that that would be kind of a fun thing to see who mentions it. And so um, Carter Hammond caught it for number one. I did a division problem yesterday, um, and he noticed that when I subtracted 2 minus 0, I got 1 down here. I don't have a clue how I did that. But uh, that was kind of an interesting end because it came out evenly. I didn't even recognize until I got to the end of the problem. I thought, well, that's not the right answer. But it's $1.23. Um, it was the answer I got. But the actual answer is $1.25 per gallon. So I cheated poor Tony out of $0.02 cents per gallon. And I'm probably going to get in trouble for that. But Carter helped me figure it out. So we'll, we'll say that Carter bailed me out there. So, uh you guys ought to be watching. I don't think I'm going to make a mistake intentionally today, but um, I, I make plenty of mistakes. I think I've made at least three this year already. Um, oh, four. I put the wrong page on the top. Um, so be watching for those. Okay, so we're going to start with geometry today. And um, this paper here, you can fill this out as, as we go along, but I'm going to take notes like I would um, have you do in class. I'd have you get out a blank sheet of paper, hand out a blank sheet of paper. You can do it on notebook paper if you want, um, but you can follow along with me. Or you can just start with this as you watch and fill in where you want or come back and fill it out, whatever. This is pretty easy stuff. You've seen most everything of that, that what we're doing today, um, except, you, you again, you need a reminder on some of these things. This is actually an eighth grade paper. This eighth grade paper um, is all sixth grade work until you get down here and you have to name the triangles and um, it's easy to miss one or two here if you were an eighth grader I would make sure I would suggest or maybe even give you a number to to uh, look for but um, today I just want a couple examples so if you're um, wanting to go through and say count and name all the equilateral triangles if you just give me a couple that's fine uh, you don't have to have the number of them and, and include every single one on this one. Okay, so let's get started with vocabulary. Vocabulary is um, of angles and triangles. Pretty straightforward. When you have an angle, you have um, two lines, nope, wrong word, not lines, rays that have endpoints, arrow going out this way, right? Okay, and then um, here's another ray, here's the endpoint, and here's the arrow going this way. So there are two rays that are connected at an at a common end point. That common end point is called the vertex. Okay. And then the angle is actually the measurement in between. This is your angle and it's measured in degrees. Now degrees in mathematics are um, are just degrees. There's no degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. It's not it's not different. All math uses the same uh, vocabulary term of degrees. Okay, remember what this uh, geometric representation is? This is a ray, this is a ray, end point. Probably don't need to write that down, but I'm going to anyway. Kind of sloppy-like. That's your end point, which in this case, because it's common, it's the vertex of an angle. Okay, there is, um, there's a couple other things we can talk about with this angle. You could talk about a bisector, which actually cuts it right in half. Um, but then you'd need a protractor like this to measure it. This is kind of a fancy protractor. It's got the little wing on it. Um, if you use a protractor properly, you pick one of the rays and the target. You got to put the crosshairs on there just like you would um, if you're scoping out a rifle or something. And then you line those up right along that line. In this case, the camera angles are a little weird. So it looks like that's going to be right. That didn't look at all right from my paper, but that's good enough for the video. And then you can measure this angle 
Um, this little wing is, is nice. It goes along that line and you have to get it where it's going to be exactly parallel. There, that should look pretty good. I think it's a little off. When I look at the paper versus the video, it's, it's kind of off because the camera is up here and that's down there. So anyway, there's a little lighting issue. Um, so if you can see that one right there, and I didn't intend for it to be a, a, a very close measurement, but it is really close to 54 degrees. You go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and it's almost to 55. The first mark to the right of it would be 54 as it goes smaller. Uh, the larger numbers are used for obtuse angles. If the angle had been over here, or the base angle, base ray, there we go. The base ray was over here, and then this was over here. Then we'd use the greater than 90. So you, even to use this, you have to know a little bit of your classification of angles. So there's our angle measure, which would be 54 degrees. If you were writing that down, you would probably write it somewhere in the center to make sure that that is associated with your angle. Okay. We... Um, in triangles, it's very close to the same stuff. You have a vertex at three different points because triangles are three line segments that are connected at endpoints or vertexes. Vertices is the plural of that. And um, so even though you've got your little angle here, each one of those is represented here. Um, you can't really put an arrow going on here because then it would go on and on throughout the triangle, but sometimes sometimes that's the way it is. If you look at a map and you look at uh, how farmland is designed, there's a road that goes on. Even though there's a road here, that triangle or that corner of a field, um, there's still pass through here. So this is just uh, the mathematical representation. Real life representations are a little bit different, of course. So. You can call these rays, but these in a triangle are called sides. And they're measured by their side length, usually with a ruler. I've got my handy dandy little Schlage one. I'm sure this must have come from my brother because he used to work for that company. You make sure you start at zero. So this line segment, which I would call, I would label line segment AB. A little line over it represents that. This is equal to, and we're just over three and a half. There's three and three fourths. So if we split it into eights, that would be three and five eighths. So that would be three and five eighths inches long. We could use a decimal to represent that if we wanted, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to take too much time on that. Again, we're working on vocabulary. These are sides. These are vertexes. These are also called, right here, these are the interior angles. Interior means inside. This has three interior angles all inside. Any angle on the outside, such as this one, is called an exterior angle. Okay, interior versus exterior. That's pretty easy to understand. Um, when you have a right triangle, such as I've drawn here. And when we do classification, you'll know it, but you already know it anyway. A right triangle is one that has a 90 degree angle in it. Um, only one 90 degree angle can ever exist within a triangle. If you have two, you won't be able to close the sides and you'd have something more like a rectangle with four sides in order to close that figure in, um, keep, the, keep the sheep in the gates. Um, in this case, this 90 degree triangle or in all 90 degree triangles, they have a special name for this side here that's opposite of the 90 degree angle. We've talked about this in class too. It's called a hypotenuse, which is a great word, hypotenuse. And then in that case, these would be sides. You always have a shorter side and a longer side, which would be the medium one. And because um, geometry works the way it does, they like to label these sides with letters so or, or variables. A lot of times this side is labeled with a lowercase a, here's a lowercase b, and then the longest one is always the c. 
And this fits a special um, grouping that uh, makes it it makes it kind of special with these angles. They um, a guy named Pythagoras discovered this uh, way back in ancient Greece and came up with a relationship between all these. So you could actually find out that in this triangle it could be three and four and five, and that looks like a pretty handy little operation. If you double it, it ends up being six, eight, and ten. That's a cool ratio between those, right? Ratio three to four to five, and it fits when you go six to eight and ten, and you can add zeros or multiply by whatever factor you want to keep that um, proportion in place. But the relationship of each one to each other, Pythagoras found out, is that you can take the first number, like three, and square it, add it to the second number, like four, and square it, and then that equals this squared. All right, let's do that real quick just to check out the mighty Pythagorean theorem here. Not, uh, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, okay? And that happens to work out all the time. 25 equals 25. And um, Pythagoras made this great um, epiphany back in ancient Greece. And he, he uh, was probably like... Um, the story of, um, oh, I forgot the name. Uh, you, okay, there's your there's your extra credit for today. You find out the name of the guy that jumped up out of the bathtub, yelled Eureka, and which means I found it, by the way, and went racing through the streets naked, screaming because he discovered the buoyancy. Um, it just popped into my head. But I'm not going to say it. I want you to report that in an email to me or text or something. And um, tell me who that who that scientist was. Um, not it wasn't Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a different guy. Uh, they both probably wore togas, though. Okay, enough vocabulary. Oh, what? No, that's not enough vocabulary. We have one more uh, for angles. We have some special case angles here. Um, I've drawn some angles without arrows on the end. Okay. Here's the thing about this one. Um, these are actually two angles together. This is, um, sometimes it's called a median where it splits it. If it split it exactly in half, it would be called a bisector. Um, but in this case, it's not in half. And so these angles are labeled as adjacent, adjacent angles, which just, that's a fancy word for saying right beside each other. Okay, adjacent angles. Okay, um, and in the naming of angles, if this was um, an angle, you pick three points on that angle. These are on opposing rays. Um, angle A, vertex is B, and there's C. Um, this is probably named, named before. You would write it kind of like our line segment thing. You'd write an angle out front, and it'd be angle A, B, and C. And you can actually abbreviate that, which is weird because it's already kind of small, as angle B. But you can see that there might be a problem because this could also be angle B. So um, you need another letter over here, and you would have to set those um, as, as separate. So angle ABC is adjacent to angle C, B, D, C, B, D. Okay. We've named our angles according to the three points. Vertex is always in the center. And you can see why you wouldn't abbreviate this one, because that would uh, confuse it. There's two angle Bs in this case, so, so that's out for that. Okay, you can also have angles that cross. Uh, you have a big angle over here and a little angle over here. But if you notice, these angles right here are actually the exact same measure. They'll end up being exactly the same, and if we had a lot of time, and I wanted this video to be over an hour, then I'd measure those out for you and we'd prove it. But you're just going to have to trust me on this one. These are called opposite angles. That one's probably not too hard to, to remember. So these also are opposite angles. And I showed you, um, or I will show you, sometimes you can mark these with tick marks, like one tick mark on each one looks makes that the same, two tick marks on that one 
look like that. And it looks like some fancy crosshairs out of a, a movie with warships or spaceships shooting at each other or something like that. Um, you also have um, some things like corresponding angles. Uh, we won't get into all of that. Corresponding angles are like um, angles that will be the same. If these are parallel and this crosses over, then the corresponding angles. I said we weren't going to get into it, but I'm going to label them anyway. These are the corresponding angles. And then you've got things like alternate angles um, and more like that. But for now, we're not going to worry about, uh, about this stuff. We're going to go into the classifying of angles and triangles. So what I've done is I've split a paper um, into fourths going vertically and thirds going this way. This is how we do it in the classroom. And you get something that looks ends up looking like this. Um, this is notes straight off the smart board. But we're going to create these real quick. Uh, so we're going to classify our angles. Classifying is just a way of writing them um, so that you can talk about your angles. Okay. Um, we're going to sketch. We're not going to draw with the protractor or the ruler because that's just going to take more time. And I think you can sketch these close enough. So we've already talked about a right triangle, and you know what a right angle is. That's when you have the box in there because it measures perfectly 90 degrees. So a right angle is equal to 90 degrees, not more, not less. It's equal to 90 degrees. Then you have the big angles that at their end point, they stretch, stretch out more. We okay, just created a new vocabulary word, stretch out. Um, this is what's called an obtuse angle. And if you notice, it's always uh, greater than, greater than this way, greater than 90 degrees. Okay. And then you have an acute angle in point. These lines are closer together. In fact, they're... Uh, less than 90 degrees, less than, remember that looks like an L when you write a less than, less than 90 degrees. And then you have another special one. Um, sometimes you have an end point and both rays spread out exactly across from each other. See that? I wrote two rays. Um, and this angle, which matches this one over here, is actually 180 degrees. So that's called a straight angle for obvious reasons. Uh, straight angle equals exactly 180 degrees. Okay, those are our four types of angles. Now, for obvious reasons, I think it'll be obvious pretty soon, we don't classify triangles in four ways, but we do have three ways. So there's three triangles. three types of triangles. There's a right triangle, which matches up here. So it's going to have one right angle. A lot of times when people draw a right triangle, they draw uh, something very similar to that. Three different side lengths. I said earlier in the video, I think that might, uh, I'm not sure if I represented that right, but you can have a right triangle. Uh, let me get a piece of scratch over here. You can have a right triangle that has two equal sides, um, it would look a little bit more like this. And this would be perfect, and this would be there. And it would split these two. These end up being equal. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But So anyway, this is a right triangle. 90 degree angle. Only can have one, but it doesn't matter. As soon as it has one, it becomes a right triangle. Okay? You can have an obtuse triangle, very similar to this. Your angles are greater than 90, but at some point there's another line. Is that going to match? That goes across. And this angle right here, only one angle has to be 180 degrees. That makes it obtuse. That's a little bit different with an acute triangle. An acute triangle will actually end up having all three angles less than 90. 
less than 90 degrees. All three. Only one. Only one. So even though this has an acute angle, this has two acute angles, this one has two acute angles, that doesn't make them acute triangles. Acute triangles have to have all three of them, okay? And then we've got triangles that, these are actually triangles measured by their angle measure. They're, they're classified by their angle measure. Um, gosh, okay. I, I hope you're not counting mistakes because I think I told a little fib there about only making three a year. Um, okay, more triangles, but this time we're going to classify them according to their side lengths. Okay? We've talked about this. We've done this on Math Minutes as well. You can have triangles that have equal side lengths. That's what looks close to equal. By the way, if you're sketching, you can um, cheat a little bit and... You can make the tick marks in there. Three tick marks all the same. One mark, one mark, one mark. Each of those means it's exactly the same. That's what's called an equilateral triangle. That should be easy to remember because the word equal is in there. Equilateral triangle. And then you have a triangle where two, only two of the sides are the same. That look close. That one's the same. And then you've got two... And two, it looks like some kind of weird alien head. Um, this is called an isosceles. This is the one that's a little bit um, tougher to remember. I like to suggest um, to students that if this one has the two E's and the two S's. And so maybe you can remember that, that two are the side. And then there's the one that, that everyone forgets um, where it might have three sides all different lengths and that is okay one tick mark two tick marks on this side but three on this side um, you could label them with actual numbers this is one this is two this is three uh, of their actual side lengths but we're representing it as um, not using any numbers because that messes up our notes a little bit and this is actually called a scalene triangle scalene oh, paper move scalene triangle Okay. Now, I kind of, you might see that. I kind of marked off this space in here because we can use that to, to talk about two other types of special things, um, specifically different angles. Um, there can be two types of adjacent angles, and that's when, um, like this straight angle, when a straight angle is split, let's put an endpoint in here, when a straight angle is split by another ray here. These two uh, angles, whatever they happen to be, these two angles add up to where their sum is, they add up to 180 degrees. Well, that has a special name. <clears throat> Those are called supplementary. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees, okay? You also have, um, when it's a right angle, you have the same type of, of uh, vocabulary word, right angle. They're going to add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so if we have an angle interrupting here, this angle and this angle add up to 90 degrees. Those are called complementary. They're very polite. Complementary angles. They complement each other up to 90 degrees. These supplement each other when they when they give to each other. It equals 180, I guess. I don't know. Okay, a couple special facts about um, triangles that we haven't talked about too much. Um, I'm checking my notes to make sure we've talked about almost everything. Um, the when we talk about a triangle. Any triangle, if all three sides are connected, which is the definition of a triangle, whenever you have three lines connected at three 
endpoints or vert vertices, then um, every angle inside that, we'll call this one a right triangle, that's a 90 degrees. We're going to say this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees. And I know that because every angle always adds up to 180 degrees. 180 comes up a lot. Um, 180 degrees in a, in a triangle is what all of the interior angles will always add up to. All of these inside ones will equal. And that's helpful because um, let's say, for instance, I have that um, isosceles triangle. Two sides are the same, but I wanted it to be a right. I drew that one as an example just a bit ago. So we have um, this is a 90 degree angle. Well, then I know that these two angles have to equal 90 degrees too. That's 180 minus 90. Well, that's going to equal 90, right? So I have to split. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I have to split these two of that 90 since these are the same. This would be 45 degrees, and this would be 45 degrees. These are called special triangles. These two exact ones, um, they, because of the ratio, they have a 30, uh, 60, and a 90. And then you have a 45, 45, and a 90. And these are used a lot in um, drawing, uh, computer-aided drafting, engineering school. Lots of times these special triangles um, are provided as, as a template kit. And I don't have mine handy here, I'd show you, but they're, they're just basically plastic pieces like the protractor is, and, uh, but they're listed like that. So you don't have to spend a lot of time measuring out angles because those are pretty common angles, okay? One more time, the interior angles always add up to um, 180 degrees. And so we might add that to our notes here. I'm going to add that in purple. Um, we put it down here, maybe. All interior angles add up to 180 degrees. You'll hear that a lot as the sum of all interior angles is 180 degrees, and that's very helpful in um, geometry when you get to geometry. And geometry can get even more specific, and you have an entire course uh, or a whole branch of mathematics based on angles and triangles, and that's called trigonometry. Trigonometry, when, when I took it in college, was one of my favorite classes. Um, which I know sounds very nerd-like, but uh, I really enjoyed the spatial reasoning and, and solving problems based on the shapes. Okay, that is pretty much our notes that we were intending to take via smart board if we were in the classroom. Um, that's a lot of information coming at you, so keep this video handy, and um, we'll make sure that you have the resources to do that. Of course, email me as well. Let's look at the homework real quick. Um, all you're doing is sketching in your different types of angles. That's all on, on the notes in the video. Um, you're sketching in the different types of triangles right here. This is just kind of a review. Sometimes I give this as a quiz, uh, pay attention quiz or something, and you can use your notes. And then after a couple days, we do it again without the notes because I think you should know that. Very basic stuff for a sixth grader. And then you've got this um, page right here, okay? Let, let's just do a quick couple examples, see if I can bring it into focus a little bit better. Get rid of all that stuff. All right, name each triangle according to the lengths of its sides. If all the sides are different, then we come back to our notes real quick. And we look at the one that says, all the sides are different. Well, this has all three different tick marks. So it's a scalene triangle. That's all you have to write in there is scalene. Okay. Uh, name the angle according to its measures. You come up and you look at, okay, well, there's triangles and their measures, 90 degrees, 180, and less than 90. So you've got acute, obtuse, or right. Uh, that shouldn't take you long. This one, they're all less than 90. Ought to be acute, right? Okay. Find the measure of the missing angle. This is where you use that information of uh, the sum 
of all interior. Remember, interior just means inside. The sum of all interior angles equals 180 degrees. That might be kind of important to write that on there. Um, if I see you've written that on there, I know you've watched the video, but uh, that's not a requirement. Find the missing measure of the angle. We did this one already. You've got 45, 45. What would be missing was 90 degrees. That ends up being a right a triangle. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you do the bottom ones on your own. Uh, equilateral, you know what that is, and you can find them. Um, there are a couple obvious ones, but you can name others too. Like for instance, X, S, Z. I said I didn't let you do that on, but I'm going to give you an example. So triangle, here's how you name it. Triangle, X, S, Z. Okay. It doesn't have to be in order. Um, traditionally that is the same as triangle. S, Z, X. I just started in a different place. So those are the same same triangles. Um, but it doesn't have to be, you don't have to list all those separate ones. Okay. Do your best on that one. Not a big deal. I'll just look to see if the ones you've listed are um, indeed equilateral right or isosceles. And um, then I'll give you the points for that. Okay. Any questions? Please email. That was probably way too long a video, but um, I care enough to, to give you all the details. I promise that's the reason. All right. Bye, guys.